uh, center, an industrial center on Oprah White Band. Uh, it's, a okay. it's a national institute. It's a national institute. That's that's the government. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's the government institute. And um, many times in the past, Professor Cohen has come, and as you can understand from all his positions and his very active role in the Information Theory Society, as a uh, like many capacities, he hosted as uh, chair of the uh, Information Theory Symposium uh, last year, 2003, in Yokohama. And he is very busy, and we're trying to get him to come before, and things were coming in the way. But this time, he committed, and although things did come in the way, he came last night from Japan and he's leaving tomorrow morning to go back to Japan. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very thankful and appreciative for uh, carrying out the commitment. We are very happy to welcome him. He, uh, when you think about all the progress uh, that Japan has made in the wireless field, you should think of Dr. Kon. It's uh, almost equivalent. <laughs> <laughs> so today he will talk to us about two. Uh, broad new technologies, uh, that of the software-defined uh, radio and the ultra-wideband technology. So, Yuji. Thank you, Tony. <coughs> um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's my great pleasure to give you a talk here at uh, University of Maryland. This is the first time to visit Tony, but uh, my first impression is quite nice. The beautiful campus, people are so kind. Yeah, that's what uh, I hope to keep collaborate. With you. Okay, um, today I'm just uh, prepare the two issues. One is a SDL, the other one is a UWB. Do you familiar about the SDL? Uh, please raise your hand if you know the SDL. No? Or just a few of them? Okay. What about the UWB, Ultra Wide Band? Oh, you more? Okay, thank you. Um, but the rest of the people are not so familiar. That why I just start uh, from the primitive issues from the SDL and the UWB, and I'm going to introduce some state of the arts of our research work in the UWB and SDL. Okay. Well, the, I just prepared the two issues. Uh, in fact, before I will start explaining that the state of the arts of SDL and the UWB, just to briefly uh, remind us such a trend of the uh, wireless communication networks uh, in order to, uh, set, uh, I mean, confirm the such a consensus all of us. Um, the currently the wireless communication networks, of course it is obvious the infrastructure networks are successful, like uh, third generation UMTS or IMT 2000s, but um, um, I must uh, more emphasize the importance of the wireless ad hoc networks because we engineers or scientists uh, have a more opportunity to introduce uh, high technology to the such a wireless ad hoc networks for the much variety of the services. And uh, many of the manufacturers are also supporting us well. So in fact, uh, here is a list of the um, infrastructure and uh, wireless ad hoc networks. Uh, green one is mainly for the uh, infrastructure networks. The red one is a wa uh, wireless ad hoc. In fact, in Japan, the third generation uh, IMT 2000 or UMTS is a quite popular and the penetration of the 3G systems, cellular systems, quite high. And uh, Korea also and now that we are focusing more beyond 3G, so-called 4G, for the multimedia applications, in which there are so many core technologies such as SDL, Software Defined Radio, and MIME OFDM. This technology is a kind of the physical layer core tech for the 4G. And the history of TV broadcasting also quite important because in Japan, we're introducing a multi carrier type of the modulation scheme like OFDM. And I myself are working at the uh, Intelligent Transport System, ITS, uh, because it's a good uh, application for the high technology of the wireless communication to the transportation systems. 
for instance, at the car navigation systems and the electric toll collections uh, without any uh, stop at the toll gate, we can uh, pass uh, by wireless connection, uh, by caching, uh, electric caching, and so on. But now we are focusing a wireless ad hoc, like a wireless LAN and PAN, personal networks, and uh, home and the sensor networks. Because it has more variety of the standard and uh, de facto standards ongoing. These are uh, core and uh, wireless ad hoc networks uh, supported by several core physical layer technology like these. Of course, a space spectrum and a smart antenna, adaptive antenna array, and uh, multi-carrier modulations and uh, channel coding. In fact, in the channel coding, the space-time coding and also the network coding is a quite a hot subject. Uh, all over the world, many of the researchers are working, focusing network coding because it's more multi-layer uh, subject. The network people are also and also the physical layer researchers approaching to the network coding. And, but uh, today, uh, it's hard to explain our activity, all of this. In fact, my researching group at the Yokohama National University, um, we have uh, 40 graduate students in my laboratory, uh, including a 17 uh, PhD and 25 masters. And also the center of excellency for the uh, optical wireless communication, uh, which uh, Tony introduced me. I'm a president of that uh, COE. Uh, we have uh, about 10 times larger of the such a scale of the researchers we have. Um, that why today I just uh, chose only two key subjects. That's uh, uh, SDL, software defined radio, and the uh, ultra wideband UWB. These two and other technology are core technology because the, the, these uh, te core technologies satisfy the more than uh, three demand for the wireless networks. For instance, that the UWB can satisfy the countermeasure for the fading and also the, uh, achieve the accurate ranging and positioning and also the physical layer uh, secure protocol, I mean secure system, and so on. That's why the only one technology can satisfy more than three demand for the wireless network. That's why we call the core tech, core technology. Now let's start, let me start the introduction of the uh, SDL, software defined radio or sof software deconfigurable radio. We can we can change the configuration of the system by changing the software. It's called the software reconfigurability. Okay? It is useful mainly for radio, but uh, also the, some network layer we can extend, such as software reconfigurability. I can show you soon. In a world, so many varieties of the wireless network coexisting, so messy, uh, to keep their balance between the integration of the networks and also the personalization of the networks, there are two key ideas. Of course, you know that the IP, the IP-based, all the networks connect. That's why it's good to integrate different networks. In the physical layer, software radio or software-defined radio technology is good for personalized networks and also you know, keep the transparency of the different networks by changing the software, I mean system configuration software. These two are the very important. In fact, the SDL, software defined radio, is a quite broad concept. Not hardware, just a concept, okay? So SDL is a broad concept in which the older function of the wireless communication like uh, protocol and a coding and a modulation can be changed by software reconfiguration. If we change the software, then we can change the protocol. For instance, this is a cell phone. 
This is a triple mode cell phone, uh, GSM, uh, CDM 1X, and a Japanese CD, uh, PDC. But um, you know, the most of the part, uh, cell phone consists of RF components and a baseband uh, processors. If we change the software in a baseband processors, then we can change the, these modulation and the coding and some protocol. Then we can reconfigure the, this handset to the car navigation system or terrestrial TV receiver, any others, right? That's a one of the key application of the software-defined radio, so-called uh, multi-mode services, okay? So th this is quite uh, useful, um, but um, uh, to satisfy or carry out the, such a SDL concept, there is a necessary condition or property like this. The, to satisfy the, such a multi-mode service, we need a multi-band, broadband capability at the RF component, radio frequency components. And also the hardware itself needs such a reconfigurability, much uh, more complicated than the programmability. And also the downloadability for the system configuration software. When we download the system software from the base station, then we can reconfigured this terminal to the other purpose mode, okay? That such a uh, downloadability also quite important uh, for the purpose of the uh, adaptive control according to the any environment. The SDL is already uh, well known in the sense of the countermeasure uh, approach uh, to satisfy the different uh, requirement at the wireless networks. You see that the huge demand for the broadband services or multi-user or higher speed of the transmissions and many different systems coexisting at the same area, overlay, overlay or underlay. In a case of course that there are many problems we have to solve like mutual interference, the different systems and also power consumption. That's also quite important for the battery-operated portable system, and so on. The, the SDL, software-defined radio, uh, have a many different direction of the research, including a, a direct conversion. Direct conversion means from radio frequency RF to the baseband, we can convert directly without any intermedi intermediate frequency circuit. Then we can uh, reduce the power consumption and also the, it uh, used to be a much a broadband system. It's good for multi-mode, multi multi-band services. And um, smart antenna or adaptive alley antenna type of the system is uh, used to be uh, software reconfigurable. Not only the beam forming, but also the reconfigure the frequency characteristics for the different multi-band services, okay? That's all also the one, of our sub one of our researching subject. This is a just a, a simple illustrations of the multi-mode reconfigurable radio systems. You see this is a PDA, okay? At home, it's work as a TV receiver. If we download the uh, system software, uh, for the car navigation system to the, uh, this uh, PDA, then it's work as a car navigation system. And again, that, uh, if we download the different software, it's work as a cell phone, and also reconfigure to the wireless LAN or wireless PAN. This example is just a four mode, but uh, if the future, the some new services happen, then we can uh, download to the original handset. Then the we can get the new service. We can keep using the same hardware by such a software download. It's uh, similar to the uh, usual PC. Uh, we used to be regularly uh, downloading uh, such a uh, antivirus 
software definition and so on. The same concept. Okay. Um, yes, go ahead. Please. Why, if you have, let's say, four or five different possible functions you want out of this equipment, mm -hmm. uh, what is the drawback of pre downloading all of them and have them on the device and just switch between? Okay. So, the, of course, at the current tree, the triple mode terminal already existing, but uh, all the hardware contained, which has a uh, supporting a different frequency band and also different protocol, different modulation scheme. It's already uh, uh, mostly over capacity of the such uh, processors. But in uh, this case, we don't need uh, any uh, huge memory. If we need uh, such a uh, service at uh, some, some, some certain place, we just download such a software uh, in a center or some database. Um, so many variety of the hard software uh, uh, stored. It's a kind of archive. Okay? This is our advantages. Of course, that the drawback is uh, we need a more sophisticated hardware which has a, a reconfigurabilities. If the, uh, for instance, uh, this uh, PD uh, cell phone has uh, some DSP processor or FPGA, uh, to reconfigure such a DSP or FPGA, it takes a long time. We need a more comp compile or time. But uh, we need a more sophisticated reconfigurable logic to shorten the such a reconfigurable time, uh, to close to the real time reconfiguration. That way, uh, we need a more expensive hardware. That's a drawback, I think. Okay. Of course, uh, some user don't need uh, too many services, multi-mode services. Just a simple term terminal is good enough and the uh, cheapest. Of course, it's a choice of the users. Okay. And a more important thing, not only such a multi-mode services, uh, but also the m remote maintenance services, quite important. In fact, I was a director of the Sony Research Center for five years. In the meantime, there was a big, uh, you know, um, loss at the company Sony. There was uh, some bag at the cell phone. It's very uh, bad because uh, the Sony have to recall and uh, collect all of their uh, cell phone to repair it. But um, as you see that um, if there is a bag at the software in the handheld, we just uh, download again and uh, remotely maintain the regularly we can lim uh, remotely maintain, even if the customer uh, doesn't know when it is reconfigured. Yeah? That's uh, one of the advantages of the SDR, Software Defined Radio. That's uh, remote maintenance services. Okay? Uh, there are many uh, 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 SDR products already. The software reconfigurable TV broadcasting terminal, the satellite terrestrial cable, TV can be uh, reconfigured to serve. And uh, ITS, Intelligent Transport System Terminal, in a vehicle, there are so many uh, uh, wireless connections. In fact, in Japan, car navigation system is quite popular. Most of the new car already pre-installed the car navigation system. And uh, toll gate, we have to stop to pay admission. But uh, we have uh, ETC, Electric Toll Collection System, is already in a car. So many wireless ex equipments installed at a very limited space. In a case that the software reconfigurability is quite useful to make it more compact. Because uh, um, electrical collection system ETC just need uh, only the, through the toll gate. Any other timing, we don't need a ETC. In a case we reconfigure to the car navigation, like that the time-sharing services available. And uh, many other examples for the multi-mode terminal, uh, including a 3G phone, a 4G phone, together with a wireless LAN, 11A type, B type, and also the DSRC is uh, one of the ETC, it's a dedicated short-range communication system for ITS. The different market is merged to the SDL market. It means uh, cell phone, LAN, and uh, car navigation system, the different vendors paying. 
selling. But um, such a SDL terminal uh, create a new market containing the consumer electronics as well as uh, some others net application. In fact, um, demand for software defined radio beyond uh, 3G is uh, again that the remote maintenance services without recalling is a kind of the bug fixing. And also the exist in a case of the transition from the first generation, second generation, third generation, fourth generation of the cellular system. Many different generations of the system coexisting in a case. The operating, common carrier operator have to prepare the different generation of the base station. If we make a, such a software defined radio type of the base station, then it is less cost for infrastructure expense. That's why the SDR uh, is widely applicable for any wireless systems like this. In US, the there is a SDL forum. I was a technical co-chair of this uh, uh, SDL forum in the US. It's mainly focusing the standardization of the API, application program interface, and uh, also the uh, uh, API for the different module interfacing of the SDL terminal or architectures. Uh, SDL architecture consists of the several different modules like uh, antenna module, RF module, and a modem module, and the security module, and the protocol, and so on. The different module interfa uh, interfacing with such a common API. And also the uh, download procedures uh, could be uh, standardized. In Japan, the IEIC is uh, similar to the IEEE, um, has a study group, so-called the Software Radio Technical Committee or group, established in 1998, mainly uh, more academic research, theoretical research, as well as uh, software hardware for SDL implementations, and a new crea a creation of the new application of SDL, and the collaboration with other institutes like SDL in Holland in the US. This is a committee. Uh, I don't, uh, this is the purpose I show you this uh, list of the member is. The green is an academic member. The sky blue is a common carrier operators. And the red is a government institute. And yellow is a uh, uh, manufacturers. All together working in the same committee to make a good balance of the academic research as well as a practical implementation for the commercial product and the regulation for SDR. Um, time is limited, just a quick uh, overview. Uh, we regularly organizing the uh, technical conference, domestic conference, three times a year and uh, once in national conference, uh, I mean international conference uh, together with SDL forum. The first stage, I mean early stage of the SDL research and development before the year 2001, we are introducing and promoting a SDL research in academia and uh, promoting the implementation of the hardware in industry. In a case that the software reconfigurable antenna is a one of the uh, key, I mean one of the um, major product, I mean output of our research and uh, many component for the SDL like uh, uh, ADC converters uh, for broadband services and uh, more al algorithm for instance that um, uh, automatic recognition of the modulation scheme it's called the uh, modulation scheme uh, identifications uh, I can explain more details soon there are many prototypes uh, implemented. The Alive, this association of radio industry and business in Japan, implemented a software radio receiver for the purpose of the surveillance to detect the illegal usage of the radio. The government regulator or um, license office um, investigating, I mean, detecting the illegal usage of radio. In a case, we need a universal receiver 
because the uh, uh, illegal user using uh, some moderation scheme, but uh, we don't know which moderation scheme the uh, such an illegal user used. In a case, we need uh, such a sophisticated uh, moderation identification scheme or algorithm, and uh, we need uh, some array antenna for estimate the direction of arrival of the incoming signal of the illegal users and so on. That's why the software-defined radio concept introduced to the such a uh, surveillance of the illegal users. And um, also the um, NICT, my institute of a government side, implemented a software radio ITS multimode terminal. Uh, it's a triple mode, uh, GSM, and uh, ETC collect toll collection system and a uh, car navigation system based on the GPS uh, using a different frequency band, triple bands. The old hardware reconfigured such a different band together with some protocol and some moderation scheme and so on. And a common carrier operator in Japan, NTT, implemented prototype of the SDL base station and terminal for cellular networks and ad hoc networks. It's a, a wireless LAN and uh, also the second generation uh, Japanese PDC, PDC cellular phone covered. And uh, many manufacturer has uh, invented uh, many new technology, for instance, uh, uh, Toshiba invented the uh, uh, mixer type of the direct converter. And a Toyocom, uh, Hitachi and NEC are focusing a different application or different core uh, technology, such as an intelligent base station or some other military applications and also the, um, I'm not quite sure what's the purpose of this uh, uh, prototype. And again, that uh, uh, year by year, the each organization uh, updated uh, such a prototype to close to the more practical systems. In fact, the Sony CSL, when I was a director of this uh, uh, Sony CSL, we implemented the uh, uh, software radio universal platform. You know, the SDL platform is good to design a new system. It's a universal platform, you know. It's uh, similar to the um, MATLAB or some DSP uh, simulators. We change just the software, then the we simulate, and um, we uh, download to the FPGA, then we can uh, uh, e experiment. Such a software packages is extended to the more practical uh, SDL universal platform. That's we call the Soplano. Um, Soplano is a fast prototype of the SDL universal platform. In a hardware part, uh, it's using the multi-port junction type of the DS, uh, direct converter, which has no active components. That means uh, very low power consumptions, and also the we don't need uh, any IF circuit. It means uh, uh, the configurability at the RF is still uh, 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 maintained. And also the software part, uh, through the system high level of the language like uh, C++ or system C or spec C, directly, I mean automatically uh, cross compiling to the uh, FPGA configuration data and so on. It's an automatic linkage together with compiling for the purpose of the sealed real-time reconfiguration. Uh, this is a prototype of the dual mode service infrastructure, 3G phone, and wireless LAN uh, uh, implemented by the NICT. The key part in this uh, system is uh, we introduce a uh, new iTalon type of the OS operating systems because the operating system is also important for the, these uh, reconfigura real time reconfigurations. 
That's been a software defined radio is a kind of the interdisciplinary area, research area in between computer science like uh, OS operation or language description, language researchers and electrical or radio engineering part. Year by year, the, our activity is increasing, uh, just skip it. Important part, we developed uh, several key technology. Uh, just to briefly pick up the, some key part. In antenna part, uh, this has been former type of the smart antenna. Could be a kind of the uh, software reconfigurable antenna for the multi-band, multi-beam forming, and so on. It's also available for MIMO space-time coding. In fact, in my laboratory, I have a uh, satellite system, software-defined radio satellite systems. I know here the center of uh, satellite and hybrid communication networks. Yes, uh, taking care of such a satellite wing. It's a KA band, millimeter wave band systems. Um, in our laboratory, we have a hub station at the building, at top of the building. We're using a, such a super bad satellite. And we have a, a mobile station. It's a three ton uh, vehicle. Um, on the top a loop of the such a mobile station, we have a DVF antenna, this form type of antenna which has a 64 elements. It's about uh, uh, 50 million US dollar. It's quite expensive. Uh, entire system, the 25 million US dollar. Because it's a millimeter wave and all the component implemented uh, originally. And it has a capability of the software reconfigurability uh, for the satellite link. In fact, the uh, Japanese uh, NASA, it's uh, similar to the NASA in the US or European ESA, has a project so-called SDL satellite. Satellite itself reconfigured for the multimodal services because uh, once we launch the satellite, it's hard to maintain remotely. That's why there's such a software defined radio concept introduced to the satellite too. And ADC, there are some challenging approach. Um, we introduce a superconductive device to the ultra high speed sampling ADC over 100 giga sampling. And also the software reconfigurable logic which consists of the hybrid structure of the current DSP or FPGA but it has a more sophisticated OS. And the RF components, well, um, the direct converter is a key component. And in fact, uh, most of the system currently, generally speaking, the implemented with digital component. But we thinking more analog based structures. Analog processing is uh, quite important. In fact, the uh, analog adaptive tuning, adaptive or tunable antenna or filters is uh, quite important to reduce uh, power consumption because uh, most of the digital circuit need uh, ADC and uh, consume many powers, much power. That's why we also challenged him to implementing the analog processor at the RF because it's good to reduce the uh, complexity of the digital circuit at the baseband. And the entire power consumption can be reduced. Okay. There's still the several research issues remain in SDR networks and mass production of the, these components and uh, description language or some interoperable OS is a quite a uh, computer science important subject. And the system handover for the transparency of the various networks. This is the extension of the concept of the SDR to the network layer. We call the end-to-end uh, -end reconfigurability, E2R, via various networks. The last week, there was a conference workshop uh, in Barcelona. I joined it. I gave a keynote speech at the E2R workshop in the European Commission 
It's a series of the project, they E2R project are uh, starting. They inviting me to give us a, uh, uh, give the lecture uh, to introduce the Japanese uh, activities. In our university, the some graduate student working on the SDR. Um, Kentaro Ikemoto is visiting uh, University of uh, Maryland. Please write a hand. Yes. He already introduced his activity here, including uh, some sort of the channel and system sensing. If we can sensing which kind of the wireless networks available now here, and uh, what's the quality of service of the each network, then we can automatically configure the software to the such a most reliable networks, right? That's why we need a sophisticated channel and system sensing or network sensing. And also the type approval in a regulation is also a big issue for SDR because uh, all the radio system approve the type for the radio regulation. That's why the um, user have no radio license can use a cell phone, right? But um, the conventionally, the it's approved type when the such a product sell sold. But a software defined radio system can change the configuration later. That means uh, the conventional scheme of the type of blue bar is useless for the SDR terminal, right? To uh, uh, prevent such a uh, illegal software reconfigurability, we need a more sophisticated type of global algorithm, uh, including uh, some identification or secure uh, encryption schemes. Yeah, sorry, the time is uh, over. That one, let me skip it. In fact, the SDL, there are two major directions of the evolution. First, from physical layer to network layer. That means uh, reconfigurability in a terminal to extend it to the network layer. The second direction is from radio to the more general system like uh, consumer electronics. Um, we can also introduce a software reconfigurability to the audio video consumer electronics or toy. Same toy can be used by software reconfiguration. The ultimate goal could be reconfigurable human beings. That's right. <laughs> I myself would like to <laughs> configure to be Tony. On <laughs> no, I don't want. No, sorry. Anyway, there are also we are dreaming uh, like that. Uh, reconfigure automobile. That's also the one of the dream. To satisfy that there uh, direction, I mean, uh, carry on the such a uh, direction. What's necessary? The to network layer, we need again the sophisticated measurement or sensing, which I already say, is a kind of the application or extension of the cognitive radio concept. And also multi-layer reconfigurability uh, between uh, physical or upper layer. It's called uh, E2R end-to-end -end reconfigurability. Uh, to consumer electronics, again, that, uh, we need a more software hardware code design. It's uh, quite important how we can optimize such a balance of the hardware software because modulation can be implemented with software or hardware. That's why uh, which balance is the best we can consider. Of course, that, uh, in a business, we need a more variable business model and uh, we need a more expert for SDR who are familiar both computer science and electrical radio engineering. That's the education issues. Because uh, SDL is an interdisciplinary uh, subject in between these technologies. Well, the time is running over just a half an hour. Is that okay? Um, Let's move on to the second subject, SDR, Software Defined, no, uh, UWB. Just to briefly introduce the background of the UWB R&D. Of course, you know the currently the demand for the multi-mode, I mean, high capacity or 
better quality of service. That's why the many uh, uh, wideband radio systems have been uh, uh, implemented and started the service, like uh, 3G uh, cell phone and the wireless LAN based on the wideband CDMA system or spread spectrum or OFDM. What's next? The wider band radio system, the better services. That means uh, that wider ultra wide band system is attractive. Because it has uh, in inherent properties like uh, low interference to the coexisting system, current already existing systems. We can underlay, overlay. And also the very low power consumption. It depends on the architectures. And the uh, ultra wide band means ultra high speed data transmission over 100 megabit per second. And the top speed is 1.03 gigabit per second at the microwave band. Okay? And um, is it uh, possible to implement uh, SOC, uh, one chip? If we compare with the other narrow band or usual wideband system in a spectral distribution, um, current 3G system occupied 5 megahertz in bandwidth and uh, wireless LAN used to be uh, using uh, about several 10 megahertz in bandwidth. But a UWB, ultra wide band at the microwave is using uh, about several gigahertz in bandwidth. It's a thousand or hundred times wider than the usual wideband system. This means um, if the transmission energy or power is same as uh, all of that, of course that the uh, spectrum density, power density is much lower than the usual system. For instance, uh, this dotted line is a level of the transmission power of the um, uh, FCC part 15 systems. The same level of the uh, radio emission from the PC. So just a PC noise level. The less than PC noise level um, transmission. That's why it could be acceptable for any other systems, right? The definition of the UWB is the, here, the fractional bandwidth uh, should be more than 25 or 20 percentage. It depends on the definition of the DAPA or FCC. Um, here is a compa uh, comparable example. The current the UMTS third generation system based on the wideband CDMA, the fractional bandwidth is a 0.323 percentage. How it is ultra wideband, you can imagine. Now, there are many modulation uh, uh, multiple access scheme for UWB transmission. Uh, there are two categories. One is a uh, modulation without carrier. That's we call the impulse radio or carrier free. I can explain more detail soon. Uh, for transmission based on the impulse radio, the pulse positioning modulation or pulse shape modulation using uh, orthogonal pulse shapes. And um, usual uh, modulation using a carrier, sinusoidal carrier, like a DS direct sequence spread spectrum or OFDA multi-carrier. And uh, for the multiple access for users, the time hopping is also one of the key for impulse radio type. Here is an example for the impulse radio type of UWB, so-called UWB IR impulse radio. This is a time waveform of the impulse radio. You see that the impulse, a train of the impulse transmitting the data by PPM and so on. The pulse itself has a very short time duration of the uh, less than the one nanosecond. That's why the each isolated pulse has an ultra wide band bandwidth. Because if the time duration is t second, the each pulse has a one over t hertz bandwidth. Okay, that's why here you see that uh, this pulse 
transmitted pulse from the antenna has a less than one nanosecond. It's occupied over several gigahertz bandwidth. Okay, that's ultra wide band. To transmit the data, in this example, we use the four pulses to transmit the one bit data, zero. This pattern identifies the users. The different user has a different patterns of the four pulses. The receiver who has a um, <coughs> desired user's hopping pattern can prepare the matched filter in the receiving side, coincide at the location of the desired hopping pattern. Then we can uh, calculate correlation. The output of the correlation is a four times larger peak then uh, we can identify data zero. The, to transmit data one, the just a shifted delta, and then the um, output of the correlator, a four times larger negative P, then we identified transmission data is one. It's a simple decoding scheme. All data transmission and the user identification is done in the time domain like this. That's why uh, we don't need uh, any fast Fourier transform FFT or IFFT unlike uh, multi-band, multi-carrier operation or FDM. That's why uh, much less power consumption to be a uh, SOC. In the information theory set, <coughs> sorry, transmission maximum speed is quite depending on the bandwidth. We using a gigahertz bandwidth. That means theoretically we can achieve the gigabit networks. Okay. There are many property and a benefit of the UWB. Again, that the, it has a, essentially the very low power spectrum. That means uh, it's good to uh, coexist with current exist system. That means uh, in a microwave band almost all the frequency band already occupied for the current existing system. But the UWB system can overlay or underlay with such an existing system because very low interference to the existing system and a very low interference from the existing system. Okay? So mutual in in interference is very low. And the um, time duration of the pulse is uh, quite uh, short. That why uh, it is good to ranging or positioning as well as uh, transmission. Because the origin of the impulse radio is impulse radar. That why uh, we can uh, simultaneously carry out the transmission and the uh, um, communication. It is good for inter vehicle communication and ranging collision avoidance later and uh, multicast uh, vehicle communication can be done by same hardware and so on. These uh, characteristics, the features, is uh, kind of the extension of the usual spread spectrum technology because spread the signal ultra wideband. Okay? That's why there are such a advantages of the spread spectrum emphasize and uh, information theoretical interest for the capacity limit, also one of the subject. In fact, we can introduce a very low rate of the channel coding to such a UWB. There are many applications, uh, mainly the wireless communication and uh, ranging and positioning systems. Uh, most of the potential application is the wireless pan for the very short range of the communication, including uh, wireless tag and uh, sensor networks. The UWB wireless pan is uh, typically much lower power consumption and uh, much higher data transmission speed than the usual wireless LAN. In a slight frequency, is it usually 
Okay, 3.1 to 10.6 gigahertz band is a microwave band, it's typical. And the other one is a 22 to 29 submillimeter wave band uh, for the much uh, high speed data transmission or uh, car sensing applications. Uh, because it, that the frequency band, microwave band, is easy to make a commercial product uh, in a sense of the hardware architecture or device materials like uh, uh, all CMOS implementations is available but a 20 to 29 is more like a, a silicon German, uh, Gem, uh, Germany type of the uh, devices we need for the higher frequency now there are still the problem in a UWB in a circuit and a components because they requested a very ultra wideband capability. It's not easy to implement such an antenna who has a very flat frequency characteristic under such a gigahertz bandwidth. Okay? That's why we need a more breakthrough for design loom. And um, many new material we need. And also there are some signal processing or information theoretical uh, um, analyzing the performance, also important subject. And the spectral management is also important. Uh, this is a spectral uh, mask uh, uh, defined by the FCC. This is a 1 gigahertz, this is a 10 gigahertz, this is a 1 to 2 gigahertz band the car navigation system or some GPS system is operated. That's why the uh, FCC strictly regulated such a transmission emission power level, upper limit. The 2 to 3 gigahertz band, the cellular system, <coughs> sorry, cell phone, and also the 2.4 gigahertz wireless LAN operated. That's why the, such a regulation also limited. That's why the 3.1 to 10.6 at uh, totally the 7.5 gigahertz in bandwidth is the uh, most appropriate for UWB purpose. In the outdoor, there are more selected after such a cell phone ba uh, band. The subject for the current research at the SD UWB is the high speed pulse generator or spectral shaping schemes and also the interference mitigation technologies and uh, many other um, UWB based, I mean MAC protocol for UWB PAN also the one of the key issues and um, in the physical layer the synchronizations uh, because uh, it's a very short time uh, duration of the pulse that was it's uh, Sensitive, sensitive for the jitters and also the measurement of the propagation and the channel modeling also important for the UWB because there is very limited uh, literature in such an area and the design of the uh, UWB antenna is also the one of the uh, good research subjects for the antenna propagation people in our laboratory there are so many subjects uh, covering. It's hard to explain everything, just uh, briefly pick up some um, theoretical analysis of the performance and also the, some interference mitigation issues and um, some coding and antenna and uh, ranging and positioning and so on. This year, the one PhD uh, uh, finish the work on some part of the PhD works uh, covering the orthogonal power shape designing and the four master student covering the LA antenna for UWB and the multi-user detection for UWB and ITS inter-vehicle communication ranging based on the UWB and uh, UWB transmission system using a fiber grating lobe that's a more optical uh, processors um, it's a time, just uh, five or ten minutes, okay? Okay. Just briefly uh, uh, introduce uh, some regulatory activity in the world. In the US, FCC already 
uh, approved the UWB commercial regulation. And then in the U uh, Europe, EDSI also making a new regulation for UWB. And the uh, European Commission project IST uh, is ongoing, like uh, Ruta Waves, UCAM, and uh, Pulses. In Japan, NICT established a UWB Institute, of which I'm a director, and also the, such a institute organizing industrial consortium for UWB product. Um, yes, the, such a consortium have two groups. Uh, one is a microwave group. It's for the more short time uh, implementation of the commercial product of the WPAN. And the millimeter wave groups is focusing more um, invention of the new technology for the uh, millimeter applications. And then channel measurement or implementation of the test bed is covered by the government foundation, like NSF foundation. It's also the, about um, 10 million US dollars. That what is easy to implement many different test bed. In a consortium member industry members can also use a, such a test bed to test their own invented algorithm or components and so on. Because of this NICT is a government institution, that why it's easy to offer the experimental license of the radio. That was all contained at the, this uh, consortium. And the contributing the standardization and the regulation uh, to make a uh, standard for WPAN at the IEEE 15 is a standardization body for the WPAN, similar to the 11 uh, for WLAN. Yeah. Uh, many devices are also implemented. Uh, most important application is the WPAN. The third generation of the Bluetooth physical layer will be implemented by UWB. And the USB wireless version 2.0 uh, requested 480 megabit per second is achieved by wireless UWB. Yeah, and um, two major alliance like uh, Motorola NICT is proposing the DS-based uh, UWB technology, and uh, Intel TI alliance uh, proposing the multiband OFDM type of the UWB. They are competing each other, and a millimeter wave application again the collision avoidance radars and uh, inter-satellite uh, communication and ranging systems. The WPAN requested uh, these requirements um, um, year 2003, May, March, the 23 proposal and down selected uh, to main only two major proposal remain at uh, uh, last July and then the try to harmonize the two proposals to a single standard using some common signaling mode at the MAC layer, enhanced MAC. But still the, um, you know, uh, deadlocked at the, such a standardization. The transmission speed again at the 480 megabit per second, uh, less than four meters. Uh, these are the website. If you have a time, please uh, visit. Um, just to uh, introduce our research result, um, this is our own proposal to the IEEE standardization. It's called the soft spectrum UWB. The basic concept is the soft spectrum adaptation SSA. It's a quite simple idea. Just we design the appropriate power shape to satisfy the any radio regulation. That's it. The such a power shaping is software reconfigurable. That why it's more adaptive to the different uh, countries' regulations to avoid the interference to the existing systems. The concept is quite simple. Uh, just uh, synthesize 
that any part any parts can be synthesized with some certain kind of function or um, orthogonal basis. If we choose appropriate basis, then we can design the appropriate uh, synthesize the appropriate power shape, which has a, a, a good power sh a spectral shaping like this. This power shape has a, such a spectra, which has a notch at the 2.4 and the 5.2 gigahertz band uh, to avoid the interference to the wireless LAN, like that. There are many other way. The, these are the different shape, which has a different central frequency. The time to time, if we hop, then we can achieve time frequency hopping. And if we merge all of the such a pulse, then make a such a spectral shape, which has a ultra wide band spectrum. Uh, these band already fully occupied, no blank frequency slot. That why uh, we designed such a spectral shape, which has a, such a notch, correspond to the each operated systems. We uh, mathematically uh, optimize such a power shape to satisfy the enough lower uh, interference to the existing system. And uh, these are the all uh, um, based on the software spectrum adaptation, we can harmonize all the proposal because all the proposed system can categorize by different kind of functions. That means uh, such a SSA is a good technology for harmonizing a different proposal as a one of the type of the SSA. So the, yeah, this is summary. Just um, this is a um, implemented uh, chip. This is die size is a three meter square, a uh, three millimeter square, uh, to multiband OFDM and also the impulse radio type both are implemented uh, this year. It's a world top level. It's the first time to implement the CMOS, all CMOS MMIC for UWB. Yeah, and the last part, the sensor networks is a quite uh, important subject for many of yours. In fact, uh, the low light sensors, the, these sensor networks don't need a ultra high speed data transmission, but some positioning capabilities or accurate positioning and so on requested. The standardization number 154A is such a sensor network based on uh, these technologies. The, what's the most op, uh, optimal modulation for such a sensor networks? We proposing an impulse radio type of the UWB because the uh, ranging capability is quite high. Um, yeah, maybe that's too much. Let's skip it. Let me conclude my talk soon. Well, sorry. Uh, doesn't work well. Last part of my slide. Yes. The UWB is purely the, uh, plastic, I mean, physical layer technology. That's why the, we focusing the real business within a couple of years. But a um, more successive uh, UW product is also scheduled and uh, bring us uh, more business opportunities in the uh, wireless consumer electronics, uh, PC, peripheral, and uh, ITS. And the regulatory uh, issue is quite important. The compatibility with current existing systems and also harmonization among the different proposals of the standardization are the key issues. But we organized a conference in Kyoto this May uh, for UWB. This is an IEEE conference sponsored by the COMSOC and the MTT Society. Uh, this is my latest uh, book release. Uh, published by the John Wiley uh, by, uh, in this May. So this is the last slide. SDL UWB is a quite uh, promised technology for the wireless uh, future uh, networks and they create a new application including uh, medical care systems. Actually I also have a big project for the medical care networks 
is a net medical network sensor networks and so on too. And also software reconfigurability in the multi layers is a quite important improve the ad hoc wireless networks and uh, infrastructure networks in terms of the ubiquitous connectivities and network transparency and adaptive resource management. And the UWB also make a um, speed and the capacity of the such a sensor networks and I, um, applic uh, ad hoc networks much higher resolution, higher speed, and so on. So I hope the, um, we can collaborate on this subject if you have an interest. Thank you for your attention. Too long? I'm sorry. I prepare too much. <laughs> One question. So, yes. uh, these power uh, masks, the limitation yes. that the regulatory bodies impose, I mean, hypothetically, if uh, more systems are developed and the performance of UW, uh, UWB are demonstrated and so on, considerably if they start replacing, the, the only reason they are there is because they mm -hmm. interfere with existing systems. Mm -hmm. If they were to Redesign, let's say, the right. Then that limitation would disappear. Oh, uh, not disappear. Change to the another uh, weaker regulation. I hope. Right. Yeah. Right. But uh, it would increase the power. Right. right. That's why we need a, such a software reconfigurability to catching up the such a new regulation for the future. That we introducing a SSA and so. On. So but if, uh, if there was no power uh, constraint uh, imposed by the regulation. Are there uh, range limitations otherwise? In other words, if the system was designed for scratch with ultra wide band, do yeah. they create other problems? Yeah, there are still many uh, problems remain. In fact, uh, for instance, at the sensor networks, the, it's hard to count how many sensors exist at the same uh, limited areas. But the regulation is only emission power for the each sensor node. Of course, that, uh, such a transmission power is not simply accumulate according to the number of the sensors, but the gradually increase such a uh, interference level to the existing system. But a um, sensor network is not operated by the common carrier. Who can take care of such a accumulated transmission rate power? That's a one of the uh, problems we have to solve soon. Okay. Because uh, it's harder to control the transmission power. Because there is no center, base station. It's not a centralized system. Right. The how we can uh, save the, such a transmission power each other. Yeah, that's also the issue for the network map layer. Mm -hmm. Will this create the like, uh, difficulties for the processing part? Will this uh, increase the processing power? The processing that like you have, you need a more powerful processor. You mean uh, for UWB? Yeah. Uh, no. The the typically the we uh, try to make a simpler hardware, uh, analog oriented circuit. We try to omit ADC or DAC because, uh, to because of the low power consumption. Okay, that's why uh, we don't need uh, any reconfigurability at the UWB case. Just a simple hardware is good enough. Okay. Yeah, the uh, essentially that uh, in a millimeter wave band, digital analog is not so much different. It's very close to each other. Yeah. That what, uh, yeah, of course, uh, if we introduce uh, such a very high speed ADC at the millimeter wave band, too expensive for the sensor node, right? That we need a more simple analog architecture. Yes. Uh, uh, I have two questions. The first is for the one talk about the software to find the radio. And I'm concerned about the hardware design because different frequency require different size of the antennas. Mm -hmm. If you want to use software to, if 
Yeah, that's a very uh, important invention. In fact, uh, the array antenna, uh, most of the conventional array antenna using a unique element antennas. If we introduce a different antenna which has a different frequency coverage, then the total array antenna can cover the ultra wideband. That's a concept of the uh, array antenna oriented the UWB antennas. <laughs> yes, that's a good question. In fact, uh, SDR requests a more signal processing uh, capability. But uh, your question, uh, UWB is more like analog simpler system, yes. Again, that the UWB is a purely physical layer technology. By using a physical component, for instance, at the sensor node, we can use a UWB, but we can operate some other external uh, overhead of the software to manage the um, software reconfigurability of the networks. Uh, these two should be uh, well balanced. I'm sorry that currently I have no solution yet, but uh, this is a good subject for us to start collaborate. Yeah, to how we compromise both directions, simpler or uh, uh, complex. As always, uh, we have the, from about 2.30 today to about 4 o'clock, uh, our speaker will be available at the yeah. satellite television at the library for a rounding discussion or questions for anybody interested to talk to Dr. Coleman. Yes, it's my pleasure. Yeah. So let's thank you once again. Thank you.